very good afternoon to all of you. Yulio Bonazzi, chairman of Aquafil Group, once said, sustainability is not a goal to be reached, but a way of thinking, a way of being, a principle we must be guided by. With that thought in our minds, I, Yashuti Sharma, and I, Shivan Shwatsyaya, welcome you all on behalf of Prayas, the Entrepreneurship Club of Great Lakes Institute of Management, Gurgaon, to our Management Fest, Sapiens 2022. Great Lakes Institute of Management, located in the corporate hub of Delhi NCR, was set up to cater to the dynamic business needs of the constantly evolving Indian and global economy. The Institute teaches discipline and diligence and aims to contribute to the betterment of society each day. The Institute, with its Indian roots and global mindset, aims at catering the leaders of tomorrow. Karm Yoga, a leadership experiential action program, is an integral part of the PGDM and PGBM courses at Great Lakes. All knowledge gained in this project are in the form of real life challenges and situations faced and helps the students to understand and apply leadership qualities and entrepreneurial skills at appropriate junctures in organizations. As global perceptions change, sustainability is turning into a must for businesses. It's more important than ever for them to adopt sustainable strategies and close the knowledge action gap to meet the requirements of the present without sacrificing those of future generations is to practice sustainability with support of economic, environmental and social pillars. With this in mind, the theme for sapiens this year is based on balancing three core aspects of sustainability, economy, environment and ethics. The deliberations for sapiens will cover these aspects through the lens of managing and applying resources and studying financial, organizational and market related challenges that confront businesses. Entrepreneurship is very closely linked to sustainable development. The wrong choice of products, services or technology can lead to the bad health of users and damage the environment to byproducts and hazardous effluents. Ethical entrepreneurs are supposed to solve this problem in our society through their products and services. This is one of many examples of how their role is important in today's world. That is why we are here today to delve into how major it is to sensitize budding entrepreneurs about the concept of green and ethical aspects of entrepreneurship for sustainable development. But before we begin, let us introduce you all to our honorable moderator and panelists. The moderator for the entrepreneurship panel, Professor S.K. Palham, is the founder director of the Management Gurgaon, formerly Industrial Advisor in the Ministry of Industries, Government of India. He is currently the Professor of Operations Management at Great Lakes Institute of Management, Advisor to Center for Joint Warfare Studies, Ministry of Defense, Trustee of Indus Quality Foundation, and President of Media for Community Foundation. Professor Palman has conducted more than 300 programs on self-effectiveness and team building in a large number of companies, banks, and leading management institutes. He is also engaged in rural development and computer literacy projects in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. He has constantly emphasized the need to develop an entrepreneurial mindset and inculcate 21st century skills among students from an early age. I now request Professor Padan to welcome our esteemed panelists with a small token of love. Our first panelist, <coughs> Mr. Saurabh Singh, is the co-founder and CEO <laughs> of the Smart Lab Innovation Lab. <laughs> in IITM with a Master's in Design from IIT Delhi, he has led teams and partnered with big corporate houses, MNCs and conglomerates to develop products and strategies for the national and international businesses. He has also founded several other entities like Sarman Research Design and Development and Brown Reflections where he extensively worked with organizations and developed design strategies to meet their business objectives. He believes that design is the best strategy 
but any strategy is only as good as its execution. We are sure that your presence here today will enlighten us with the true sense and meaning of entrepreneurship. Our next panelist is Ms. Monica She's a brand storyteller and a digital strategist with over two decades in managerial as well as leadership position. She has worked with reputed brands like Microsoft, Canon, Wipro, and many other MNCs, spearheading complete business divisions. In her entrepreneurial avatar, she has been an inspiration behind a successful brand communication agency, Interactive Peace, which has spread its wings over 30 plus years of existence and has partnered with national, governmental and international brands. She was also awarded the Most Prominent Women Empowerment Award by Merit Awards and Market Research. With a career filled with so many different experiences, accomplishments and an ocean of knowledge, we are honored to have you here today between us. I am sure this small introduction has already made our young entrepreneurs here ready to showcase their ideas. Last but not the least, we have Mr. Chan Se on the panel. With a B.Tech honors from IIT Kharagpur <coughs> and an MS from Illinois Institute of Technology. <coughs> he has led several organizations. He has been the president of the Indian Association of Pet Manufacturers and Association of Plastic Manufacturers. Currently, he is serving as the chairman of Paul Polymers Limited, Greater Kailash Lion Service Foundation, and Gyan Asha Vocational Service Center. Throughout his career, he has been awarded various accolades like the Udyog Raku from the National Alliance of Young Entrepreneurs, the World Star Award from World Packaging Association, the Asia Star Award from the Asian Packaging Organization, and the India Star Award from the Indian Institute of Packaging, and many more. We are delighted and honored to have you on the panel today, sir. The floor is now open for the panel discussion. Can I have your mic? I think uh, we are very lucky to have a highly diversified panel today. And uh, we are not following a very structured way. The very reason is entrepreneurship is not a very structured way that things grow. It's organic in structure. And what I'll do is I'll request each of the panelists to give a brief comment of their journey in about four or five minutes. We'll come to the specific issues in the second round. The idea is because all these three people belong to totally different disciplines altogether, but what's common element in them? Entrepreneurship and solving problem in a creative fashion and how <coughs> it's related to sustainability also to some extent, possibly. Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> beyond the introduction, i like to add something more. <coughs> uh, I'll start with the next one. Chan said happens to be a classmate from IIT Kharagpur and uh, we have a long association. And uh, Monica, she is from the Delhi University, that's how I came to know. The college which she belongs to, the principal is a good friend of mine, Dr. Lakshmi. She always remembers you all the time. And uh, that is the first college in the Delhi University for College for Applied Sciences for Women. They have done a large number of entrepreneurship programs in various areas. And uh, she has been the one of the outstanding students from that particular school college, and which has imparted the knowledge and shared the experience with a large number of colleges. Along with Dr. Lakshmi, we have done quite a few programs in the Delhi University Colleges where she has shared her experience also, which have been highly appreciated by the students. And Saurabh, of course, is a very young, young man. You see, the, the age group is very wide. <laughs> Experiences are different. Uh, but the learnings are important, you know, at different stages. Because you may come across as an entrepreneur, different aspects of different problems. And I think I'll start first with the uh, sort of. So we have it. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hi. So um, 
for my journey uh, so far uh, what i feel is that my journey just started but uh, still uh, whatever i have seen so far is uh, when i passed out from iit uh, from masters of design uh, i was doing a product uh, it was like a last year project and i was working with a company and within that tenure where my i have to complete my project they i got an order for that product which i was developing that was a new product uh, the company was trying to develop something new and i was just uh, helping them out but they got the order so uh, they gave me a job offer and uh, i thought that if this can work uh, why can why, I, at least at this point of time i don't have any liability so i should just try and uh, see uh, my uh, try my luck in entrepreneurship so i i thought that i'll start my company so just fresh out of my uh, passing out of college i started as a freelancer i started a proprietary firm and then eventually as i started working with customers and clients uh, one of the customer we were developing a pro uh, product and they said that your design is not working because our manufacturers are unable to manufacture it so i said that let me just prepare a prototype for you uh, once you see the prototype you understand how to manufacture it so when i made the prototype they said why don't you manufacture the product for us I said I don't have any uh, experience in developing uh, manufacturing product. I'm just a uh, consultant. So they said actually we are buying products from China, and uh, every year we're buying two containers. So yeah, so one container, uh, whatever we have to pay upfront. So we pay you the entire order upfront as an advance for you. So it will be it will help you as a capital. So and then I converted my proprietary form into private limited form, and I started manufacturing products. I had a setup in Okla, and uh, from 2010 to 2014, we were developing products. Um, so when when you get into manufacturing, uh, most of the time your uh, focus is on you know various other aspects of the daily operations, and I was moving away from my core expertise, which is design. And so 2015, uh, I joined. Um, This media design private limited. It's an old company, a uh, 25 year old company, and uh, they are into product development. So I was heading the Bombay office from 2015 uh, to 2018, and I came here. We started a new company, This Media Innovation Labs, where we have three uh, partners. And one of the partner, uh, I must tell you, uh, he's the CEO of the company. Um, he's the youngest one in the team. Uh, he's four times president award winner, and uh, he made his first innovation when he was in at age of 14. And um, he was coming. He was again in NIF, uh, uh, you know, discovery. Uh, and if you don't know, NIF is the National Institute of uh, National Innovation Foundation. And he was uh, he was a grass grassroots innovator. He was uh, in a boarding school and. Uh, he was missing his mother's food, so he he made a machine which could replicate his mother's recipe. That was the name he gave to his product. And at that time, uh, A.P. Jabbar Kala was the president. He they, he was bachelor, uh, president was bachelor, so he really appreciated the product and said, that, "Why don't you make one for me?" For for me, and that's how uh, he is he is associated with this media because we help them in uh, it converting his idea into product. And now he's one of the partners. So this is the small uh, journey which we have, which I have, and now we are trying. So over the years, we have developed uh, frameworks uh, for innovation because innovation is most often we you know um, misunderstood as invention, and invention and innovation are two different things. Um, and the ROIs which are associated with innovation is almost. For a lot of corporates, it's a big challenge because nobody really wants to innovate because they scared that you know it's, it's, it doesn't have a uh, it's just a probability that you success. So you have to travel the entire journey. You have to do all the R and Ds, and at the end of the day, you might fail. So no corporate likes that idea. So we have development frameworks where we at least try to create things in a in a proper systematic or scientific math methods where we create a Uh, value for a consumer and has a market fit. So that's what we are doing in, uh, currently in the company. And as entrepreneurs, uh, you know what I feel is that you start with a problem, and there are many ways to start an entrepreneurship. But the most important thing is uh, for any entrepreneur that uh, there should be an ability to create value. So value creation is 
very important. And entrepreneurship is not a God-given thing, not necessary for anyone to be an entrepreneur. But wherever you are, uh, even if you're in a company, uh, try to create value, uh, try to focus uh, you know, more on how uh, value creation can be done within the company, within the team. And that's what we are trying to do in uh, innovation. Thank you. OK, Monica. Yes. Let's give a big hand to this. This was going to just to put a framework, you know, what type of environment these people have got in a totally different way. Then we'll come to a slightly more detailed version, and then the question answers. Monica. Hello, and good evening. Good morning. Huh? Good afternoon. <laughs> yes. You know, sir said something in my introduction, and which I really do not roger. For a simple reason, he said I was an outstanding student. Believe you me, I was never an outstanding student. And you know how it all started? Two doctors. Uh, Monica, I, I differ. <laughs> because outstanding is not only in marks, <laughs> it's in performance. And Thank I still so hold much. my view correctly. Thank you, sir. How it all started, born to two doctors. They were very happy when they had the elder son. And that son was very intelligent, the youngest cardiologist in India. And they wanted a daughter. And I was born. <laughs> but they didn't know, uh, well the growing years were amazing, uh, till about primary school, but when, uh, you know, it started coming to my senior secondary and secondary schools and whatever, I started facing a lot of problems with my studies. And you know, everybody started saying, Dhyan kaha hai tumara, padhai me dhyan nahi lagta hai. I was always contemplating that dhyan hai kaha, kya hota hai, dhyan naam ki cheez kya hota hai. And with all the lovely care, everything that I got in my life, I was still having a lot of problems. I think in those days, people could not understand what's dyslexia and you know what people are going through in terms of uh, you know reading, reading something and contemplating something else and then there is a whole lot of questions and you know when the teacher was teaching in, in the class I was getting so stressed that what is it that she's going to ask me and ask me to read. So throughout the class I was always very stressed and in tension. But the life was going like this. Uh, and my brother was doing very well. Gold medalist and whatnots, until I realized something very big in my life, which was very profound. When I started learning the mind management skills, uh, and that actually changed my life. And that's when I met Dr. Lakshmi, wherein it was a whole new change. Uh, you don't have to mug up things anymore. You're very creative. You've left in a creative environment, and you're ready to create something. So that's how the life started, the life changed. Um, I was empowering myself. So let me share with you, this reminds me of a story and I would love to share that with you. Once upon a time there was a saint and this saint had a habit of looking into a mirror. While he used to speak and give wonderful sessions, <coughs> People used to get very bothered. Ki kya problem hai? Why is it that this guy has a habit of looking into the mirror again and again? And one intelligent person, like you know, one of you, went to him, sir. We want to ask you a small question. He said, Yes, please ask me. Why is it that every now and then you start looking in the mirror? He started laughing. He said that very clearly, whenever there is a problem, and I look into the mirror. I see something. That guy said, you must be looking yourself. He said, yes. So which tells me and reminds me that the problem is created by me, myself. Okay, great. Then why is it the second time again you're looking in the mirror? Who has to give me the solution? He says, again I see my face. And the solution has to again come back from myself. 
And the day I realized this one, my life started changing. That is what I called as mind management. So for me, when I started, you know, asking myself, hey Monica, do you know yourself? Can you accept yourself the way you are? The huge change came in me. So the first things first is, know yourself, accept yourself. Don't compare, because no two people are alike. You have to constantly keep talking to yourself. Yeah, Keep talking, know yourself more, what is my USP? You know, when we go to an uh, organization, or when we decide of creating our own organization, I always talk to youngsters. Very simple two things. Ask yourself, when you're creating an organization, and when you plan to serve somebody, or you know, offer your solution to somebody, do you know what their pain areas are? Or do you know what their passion areas are? If you are able to answer only these two P's, which is their pain or their passion area, believe you me, they are going to listen to you. Like you're listening to me. Your pain area is you want to become an entrepreneur. Your passion area is you again want to become an entrepreneur. And hence, you have no choice but to listen to me. Yes? So that's what it is. And when I started doing that, my life started changing. So I have a few things which I'm going to share as the you know the whole panel starts unfolding. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Scenarios all together. We'll come to the details details soon. Each one gives you a very important learning in life. Chance it. Thank you, Sujit. Uh, Chance had asked me, do you want a PPT preparation or something else? I said, don't come with any preparation. <laughs> Everything is here. You are an experienced person. You talk from your heart, yeah, yeah. not from the books. Yeah. Well, it's uh, very nice to be amongst uh, so many young people, uh, which is nowadays quite rare for me, because we are the only two gray-haired people here. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, to talk about entrepreneurship, we've heard uh, two outstanding examples of entrepreneurship in the modern uh, sense. Entrepreneurship has been around for centuries, I would say, uh, ever since man was born, created or was born. Entrepreneurship takes many, many forms. For some, it is a means of earning money. For others, it is a means of serving society. For others, it's from a means to provide mental stability to people. That those are people like, I would include Pujaris in that, and Brahmins and astrologers. They're all entrepreneurs in some way or the other. In my personal experience, uh, it's a very personal experience because no two people have the same set, same set of circumstances in life. and. Uh, Back in those days when we were studying in school and colleges, most of the time things were really decided for us. You know, that oh you go and do engineering, or you go and do doctor, or you become a lawyer. But engineering was top, then there was medicine and then there was others. So uh, after doing engineering and getting getting a degree was very important. Getting a degree because if you don't have a degree, you won't get a job. So you got a degree, like she said, I was never an outsider. He was much better student than I was <laughs> in Mark's term. But I, I enjoyed life. I think life is also uh, meant to be enjoyed. It's not only a, a struggle, which it always is, but excuse me one second. Turn it off. Not yet. Just tell her I'll call it. Uh, so, 
once uh, having finished through the formal part of getting the education, the choice was there what to do. And uh, my dad was working with a company in Delhi for many, many years. He started as a chemist and uh, he got went up through the ranks and ended up as a director uh, in DCM. That company's name was DCM, Delhi Cloth and General Mill, which is today bifurcated into many portions. But I, after USA, I said to myself, and this was inspired by some other friends who had gone into it, uh, started small businesses, that if I want to work for somebody, I would rather work in USA. And if I want to live in India, then I have to work for myself. That was the one particular goal that I set for myself. And uh, in those days, things were very different than what is India today. You people can't even imagine. You, uh, India was a very regulated country, highly controlled uh, uh, business uh, activities were highly controlled, regulated. And for practically everything and anything, one had to go to some department of the government of India to either get a license or to get an import license or even to get a permission to set up a factory. Or then after setting up a factory, to, you have to get a factory license, then you have to get a whole lot of, I, I think at one time I counted, there were like 46 permissions that we had to, uh, and to keep running in our factory. But entrepreneur faces different kinds of problems in his life. Any, no enterprise is started without problems. The, what she said is the mindset. The mindset has to be that I am going to overcome these problems. And overcoming those problems can be done by analysis, diligence, contacts, uh, experience of others, talking to people, learning from them. Keep doing that, you will always uh, be able, able to overcome any problem that you might have. Enterprise for me was coming from the background I had worked. I had worked in craft, craft cheese. Uh, most of you know craft cheese. Uh, in the cheese wrapping and packaging business. I was a project engineer and the challenge given was to wrap individual slice of cheese. Each slice of cheese, we used to cut it and wrap it, weigh it, and then pack it into 10 slices or 5 slices to make a deliverable product. Now, cutting a block of Swiss cheese, uh, Swiss cheese has got holes in it. So, when you the blade goes through the cheese, every slice has a different set of hole. So, every slice thickness has to be regulated. And so, we had to design a sensor which weighed every slice and gave feedback to the blade to move up and down to reduce the thickness or increase the thickness. But that itself was a challenge which we overcame. And then when in India I saw in those days there was no packaging. Virtually our food was all sold loose. My, even in our house the dal used to come from the paniya in a uh, newspaper, old, old newspaper bag. The oil was sold by a kuppi and the banya was selling instead of half kg, he was giving 400 grams to all the poor people. So I, I felt that packaging is an area which will have a good future in India and particularly food packaging because food packaging is requires uh, safety, deliverability, shelf life and no harm to the contents of the food, uh, package from the package. That's very important because uh, the tin and all used to rust. So I, we chose plastics because that was the material of the century. Plastics has changed human life so much, so much that you, I can't, if we start writing, there'll be uh, 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 probably an encyclopedia that will be written on it. Uh, we chose that and as time went on, we kept developing different kinds of packaging materials for the industry. We pioneered the PET, uh, these bottles that you see here. Uh, we brought them to India. The technology was not here. 
We brought them from Japan. And uh, as time went on, we kept on uh, expanding and growing. And, and it, we now, uh, six, seven factories we had all over India to be near to the customer. Another part of entrepreneurship is any idea that you have and you want to implement. Uh, my life experience is that anything can be done, anything that you really want to do. But to make it profitable is another story. So you have to keep, uh, have a financial mind, like I, use, I call it a Baniya's mind, in your, at the back of your head. To see what, what you are doing, whatever you are adding, whatever process you are adding, whatever uh, change you are making, how much cost is it going to add or how much cost is going to reduce. Because your customer is going to buy at the cheapest price. I was told many times by my customers, oh, you are the largest, why should you be more expensive than the smaller guy? You should be cheaper. And that was always a challenge. So uh, I think the one of the key subjects today is sustainability. I, I think that's what uh, the opening remarks were. Now, plastics give you an excellent opportunity for entrepreneurship in the area of sustainability. I'm very glad to inform you that India has one of the highest rates in the world of recycling of plastic materials. Highest. Uh, the people to whom I salute every day, and I think we all should, are the rag pickers, the garbage collectors. And the way they segregate the garbage into usable, reusable, recyclable, and ultimately what is left is really garbage, which cannot be used by anybody. So if you have a chance, you can go and look near the Jamna River, uh, near the flyover. There are these, uh, there's a whole village there, thousands and thousands of people live there. They segregate tin, glass, aluminum, paper, cloth, plastic, everything, and make bundles out of it. And those bundles are collected by uh, the companies which are recycling. The paper is, goes to the craft paper companies, the cloth goes to the uh, uh, textile companies, plastic goes to the uh, plastic recycling companies. And within that today, the technology has developed where you can make virtually as good a product from the recycled material as the virgin material. So uh, you have a, it's not biodegradable. That sense of uh, uh, sustain, uh, environmental damage one has to maintain that that is a, maybe a cost of living. But it doesn't have to be dumped into the ocean it doesn't have to be dumped into the rivers or the lakes, which is what is happening. So the real uh, culprit is the single use. The single use, uh, plastics may, uh, use should be minimized, which the government is trying to do. So if you all want to look at it, there are now about 20, I think 15 or 20 companies in India doing recycling of plastics. One very interesting thing which I saw and which is being done by an NGO, it's not even a company. You know these uh, potato chip uh, bags that we all eat and the kurkures and all that which come in this aluminum uh, lined with plastic. These, uh, this NGO called Goonj, they have a set up in Okla where they, they, there are these women in their houses, they slit these bags huh, and they just slit them into small, small threads. Then they weave them on looms and they make fabric, they make bags, they make spectacle covers, they make mobile phone bags. And they look very nice because inside is all shiny and silvery. Uh, yeah. uh, now, it, it, they're doing it on a very, uh, I mean, I would say, uh, very small scale. But this is the biggest problem we have. The pouches have no way of recycling because they're laminated. So if we can use them for other products, which have a longer life style, we will help the environment in a tremendous way. Now we have no solution for delivering potato chips to you. So far, the industry has not been able to find a way of delivering food products uh, to the consumer without using these particular structures. 
The other alternatives are very expensive and unreliable. So I think as long as we don't have that, we will probably have to keep doing this or you start making potato chips at home. <laughs> so uh, the experiences from my particular life are that from within you, like she said, you are the solution, you are the problem. There is nobody else. It's your attitude. And if you change that attitude, you'll find life will be a very pleasant way to place to live. And if you don't, you will keep fretting and fuming and uh, crying about it. I think that's enough for opening remarks. Yeah. Thank you, John. Being a professor, I can't resist making some comments on the <laughs> basic subject. Yeah, <laughs> uh, entrepreneurship, you know, the the crux is solving problem in a creative fashion. I think most of them mentioned are identify the problems in the beginning and give a creative solution, new solution which is part. And second aspect is most of the education in the entrepreneurship area is based, formal education is based on how to raise the funds, how to get the company registered, so many things. That means they are all the time talking about tangibles, land, building, machinery, other things. But the truth is, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, they did not have money, they did not have land, and many of them did not have technology also. Zero buying money is not this. Of course, he had the technology with him. I didn't have money. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, just to start with the, now the understanding is, for a, the way you run an established business is totally different. The moment you are an entrepreneur, you have a lot of handicaps. First of all, you don't have money to buy things. Number two, you do not have experience. You do not have the technology, and your cost is high. Let me ask you a question: Why the cost of a beginner is high? Why? Anybody? Yes. No. Something else. Why the cost of a Beginner is always high. Yes. Anything more than that? Yes. There's a competition. He goes for the competition, so it costs him more. No, competition I talk slightly later on. Possibility of committing more mistakes. It's a beginner. Pardon? Possibility of committing more mistakes. Okay. That means you don't have any experience. Anything else? Yeah. Scale production. Okay, economies of scale. Now, when you start a business new, you can never compete with the existing manufacturers. I usually take a classical example of, let's say, the, he gave an example of the uh, potato chips, lace. When you start a business, you will buy potatoes from the local market. Let's say these days, the rate of a potato is about 12 rupees a year. But if you go to subsequent the rate is about 7 to 8 rupees a year. But people like Pepsi and other people, Lays, they don't go to the market. They buy from the farmers. And do you know what rate do they buy? About 4 rupees a kilo. You are buying at the rate of 12 rupees a kilo, they are buying at 4 rupees a kilo. The cost of equipment that they had has been depreciated over a period of 10 years. Their fixed cost is low, their variable cost is low, and when you are beginning, you are likely to make mistakes, somebody pointed out. So your cost is high. So as a beginner, you can never compete with the established manufacturers in terms of price. Number two, can you compete in terms of quality? Answer again is no. The reason is, People who have learned over a period of time, they have overcome the mistakes. I usually give an example. If you happen to be a girl, 
don't compete to your mother-in-law in making chapatis. <laughs> you will never succeed. Because she had done over a period of 20, 30 years. And no amount of technology can you can make better than her. So what do you do? Okay. Third is the delivery. So that means neither your price is okay, nor your quality is okay, nor your delivery is okay. So everything is a mainstay and a problem. What do they do? So the basic lesson, first lesson is <coughs> entrepreneurs do not compete. Don't compete with your mother-in-law and chapati, but you can make some noodles or something else where you can do better. So the lesson is do not compete. Innovate. Entrepreneurs do not compete. And when you solve a problem, that means nobody has here to solve the problem. If the problem is existing, and if you solve it in a creative manner, there's no competition. So common element in all the entrepreneurs is they solve a problem, which is a compelling problem, where people can pay. If they can't pay, that's, that's what we do in the career world. That means it's basically a service alone, but the concepts are almost same. Both solve the problem. One do it for the service and satisfaction. How many PGP students are here? Raise your hand. What is the experience in Karma Yoga when you did? Did it give you some joy? Yes, More than joy. Could you bring joy to the students also, to the school children? Yes, that is what actually the that you got the benefit. That's the return. But in a commercial venture, you want to return in terms of finance also. As I think mentioned by Johnson and others also. So the best thing is, start with the problem when there's no competition and solve it in a creative fashion and develop a mechanism to get paid. That's what I wanted to share with the, the whole group of such the essentials. And it requires courage. You're, if, you, if you think that you're going to succeed in the first attempt, uh, then you're in the wrong ballgame. People don't succeed in the first one. You've got to make trial. I still remember Chan said when he developed the first package for Rath's company. I still remember Chan said, I still have one, one container in my house. It was a curved thing. And people bought Rath Vanaspati, not for the Vanaspati, but for the sake of the packaging. That's what you did. That's solving the problem of packaging in an innovative fashion. And uh, that's the lesson which I'd like to share with you. Now we'll go to the slightly more detail. You can take any more challenges which you... What's the challenge in entrepreneurship and how did you overcome? Or all challenges need not be overcome also. What do you think is still the challenge remaining? So, um... So we, we generally focus on innovation, as I said. And when we say innovation, um, the most important thing which you're talking about, and if I've been talking about for uh, quite some time now, is that um, we, we say that you know, necessity is the mother of innovation. And, and if, if, we, if we look a little deeper, we realize that the human values are the mother of your necessities. And, what you feel is important for you, what you feel is necessary for you, is actually coming from the value system you're coming from. If you have a good innovation for you. So when we do innovation, we always talk about values. And values is not just, it's just a social thing, but it's also defining the viability of your business. For example, if there is a product or if there is an offering uh, where you think that people will not buy it, right? For some reason, it is you feel that's an important thing and you want to give it open and then you're designing the entire business uh, structure and how the revenue will be generated. And today's time, there is a lot of talk about earning cash on the, you know, entrepreneurs always talk about being willing to earn cash, which is very unsustainable thought uh, in itself. And uh, when we talk about value system, you have to see what products uh, are important for our people and for which they don't pay. And you look at the entire um, product 
famous products or successful products be from cliches like Apple or Tesla to anything which is new. Um, Apple became uh, uh, started, they gave the public offerings in, within the four years of uh, incorporation. They started in 1971 and in 1980 they were public. And the revenues which they were worth 150 times uh, of what they started four years back. And if you look at the cost of the product at that time which they were selling, uh, you can't even think of buying it even today at this point uh, of time. But uh, they were giving something and that is where the whole innovation question comes in that you can solve the problem, you can uh, understand the behavior of the user, you can give them the user experience if they want. But what makes your product different from any other product is do you enable your user? For example, um, there was a time when uh, we used to do graphic designs and the graphic no problem would be when you see a color on the screen and when you print that color on the paper, it changes. So as a graphic designer, we always used to see LP cars plus Apple Oka. So what Apple was doing is that what I want to create as a user, he's enabling me to do it better. So it gives you a, some sense of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Good, you feel good about yourself, your offering, like you want to do something in your life and there is someone or some product who helps you to do it better. It's not just making your life easy, but also making you look better in front of other people. So that is where the core values of you know, uh, product development comes in. And when we start developing the product, uh, there are, again, a server saying that, you know, um, so, um, volume, um, volumes and scale, economy of scale and all those things and uh, it has to be also seen a little deeper. Uh, there are in Indian cultures, uh, everything was traditional, business was traditional, it used to run from family to family, product development was traditional, Every, uh, there was a, the whole caste system was based on the work which you do and, and there was a deep learning which was there and if you look at to that uh, deep learning will understand that how product development used to happen or how business used to be run. And the four important things, the three important things uh, which I have learned, uh, which is which can be applied to anything, even in entrepreneurship or in your personal life. The one is the exposure. Exposure is most uh, important. Uh, you can't solve problem from, uh, from a room. You have to move out, you have to talk to people, you have to meet people. Uh, I should not say it, but uh, um, even whatever money you spend on your education, if you save that money and just travel the world, do a uh, backpacking travel, I assure you will have at least 10 business ideas and 100 contacts, uh, global contacts, for kind of amount which you spend on. So exposure is, uh, for me, it's more important than education. Uh, education comes after the exposure. Once you, once you know what you want to learn, then you give your 100% in learning that. Uh, if you learn it first and then you realize that what I should do with my learning, that's, a, that's not the right way. You should just move, uh, go meet people and then you find your calling and then you need to upgrade your skills in that particular area and you give your 100% to that because you, that's what you want to do. So exposure is one and second is love for people. People are very important. Even if you are an influencer, online influencer, then also you want likes and subscriptions and if you are selling the product, then also you want buyers and users. People are very important, love. People, you should have a deep sense of respect for your customer. You should not see that, since many times when we solve problems, we uh, disassociate ourselves with that problem. We said that how make it a uh, segmented problem solved there. It should be your problem. It, it, if you start solving your problem and you see how committed you are to that problem and how uh, you know genuine you are to that problem and look at the entire business, uh, big businesses right from TVS to, um, uh, to to any business if you look at look at the business, how they started. Community um, uh, People who are buying the product, people who are working with you, uh, your your teammates, it's all important. So, so a entrepreneur ki sirf ek hi KPI hota hai. And that is value maximization of the entire stakeholder. Okay. 
सो आपके कितने स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं चाहे वो आपके कस्टमर्स हों चाहे वो आपके शेयर होल्डर्स हों चाहे वो आपके इन्वेस्टर्स हों या आपके टीम मेट्स हों और द स्टेक होल्डर्स की वैल्यू आप कैसे मैक्सीमाइज कर सकते हो दैट इज वॉट द वर्क ऑफ ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स थिंक अबाउट एंड ये देर आर मेनी टूल्स विच यू लर्न फ्राम द कॉलेज फ्राम द यू नो different courses how to use that tool is this only that you you must have a deep sense of respect towards the people for whom you are making the product the people who are working with you and try to get more exposures that is the fundamental difference between a, a typical middle class uh, children who are growing up in a very conservative environment and the business class uh, students because uh, business class um, uh, children have more exposure to things they can go out they can uh, see things and the the way of thinking is different the way they uh, they look at things are different middle class family most talks about savings and you know conservative thinking but this is important it is very important uh, that is where the sustainability and ethics part comes in but uh, exposure is equally important to create a right kind of value which you want to deliver for them. thank you very much Allow me a minute to share some facts with you. 2016, 471 startups. 2022, approximately 73,000 startups. India, third largest ecosystem for having your startups. Interestingly, 80 to 90 percent of startups shut down. within the working of 5 years of their inception these are facts not created by me you google them you get everything now what makes the sustainability very rightly said three things that we have to care about well i think we're not away from the covid times we've seen it all lot of organizations had great economy there was a big finance which was there which was backing up but still they shut down why was it so let me again take you back to my own story i don't know if i can see the people on that side yeah i, I, I think, think i also this yeah yeah and i am not able to see <laughs> so i love to talk to you in fact i also thought uh, mm. no, they are no, quite I shut off <laughs> if i am not able to i don't enjoy it right? okay you good so you see how it all started the first thing which i told to you was to accept yourself right and that's what i did to myself my mother asked me a million dollar question like you know what sir said in those days very few people were going for optometry and when you have a family of doctors the only vision that you had is you know doctor mm -hmm. uh, doctor engineer doctor engineer I'm talking about those ninety batch. तो वो ही देखा था, वही सोचा था, और वही समझा था कि डॉक्टर ही बनेंगे। तो वो एक दिमाग में, you know that in, that was very much instant. And then my mom was talking to me, and she said, देखो, I don't want you to be a doctor or an engineer. Be what you love to be. Because if somebody wakes you up at two at night and asks you do that job you should be full on on your energy and do it happily rather than craving ki kya hai patient aa gaya you know jaga diya and whatever right so that is what she asked me and i kept on asking myself where does my passion lies with that understanding when you have that clarity then start working upon creating a focus for yourself or creating a vision for yourself by that i mean everybody of us we want to be achiever in whatever sense i'm not going to define that definition for you you go at it if you want to be what you really want to be my dear friends just write down this statement for yourself glue your intentions with your imagination glue your intentions with your imagination and outside 
put up board of do not disturb. And that's what made me why I'm standing in front of you. I became deaf to what people were saying. Kaise karoge, kya hoga, kar paoge ya nahi kar paoge. I was not caring about them. I had my vision, where I wanted to go, how I wanted to achieve that, and that was the focus which brought me where I am today. The second thing which I learned in my life is very clear. Beware of CCJ. Beware of CCJ. Where C stands for competition. Another C stands for comparison. And J stands for jealousy. I keep myself away from this. I know my competition. I know their positives. I know what I have to learn, but I do not compare. Because you are your own limit. Everybody of you, you have a different caliber. We are not bound to copy others. Look at these two siblings which are born to parents. They might be, you know, um, totally resembling each other. But they still do not resemble. Even a mom knows your Rama and Shama. This is Sita, this is Gita. Right? That's what it is. So, no two people are alike. And let's not be the copycats. We are unique personalities. Let's appreciate ourselves. And the second one is, and the third one, which is jealousy. It is bound to happen. When you start comparisons, the jealousy is bound to come. Now, imagine. Jo manufacturing unit may ingredient jaiva. Sir is manufacturing. He knows it very well, and I'm sure he's going to rush me on that. That if you're giving a negative ghatiya input, the processing ke baad, positive output koi bhi So if I'm giving these three negative emotions, ska production ke saa? Negative. And then I imagine to run an organization which has to be a successful one. Is it possible? No. So we are living in an inclusive culture, my dear friends. And for us to be creative, for us to be sustaining, we have to be positive. So, in these corona times, in these bukha times, you know what is bukha? I'm sure you all would know. B U C A. We are living in volatile times, uncertain times. We are living in a complex world and we are living in an ambiguous world. <coughs> in words, we can survive. Okay. Entrepreneur to Vanna Chapeo. But do you, do you know what do we need? We need three more values, or uh, sorry, four more values to actually sustain in these times. And those were the people who could actually sustain in these Buka times who had the value. So please be grounded by your values. I never cared. And I'm telling you the fact of my life. I never cared. You know, I work in advertising industry. People used to tell me, hey, Monica, you don't smoke, you're not ready. I am not a people pleaser. I'm not dependent upon any of these outside things. So you don't have to be a people pleaser. By the way, Maki your wish. So be grounded by your own values. The second one is you're living in an, you know, a world where there is uncertainty. So for us to give sustainable solutions, you have to have the better understanding of the ecosystem. Everything you understand, go in depth why and how the chemistry is working. The second, the third one is C, which is complex. For complexity, develop the clarity in your thoughts. Very clean and clear. If your mind is not negative, not creating any negative production, believe you me, you'll have clarity. And a clear mind has to be creative and constructive. And that's what my business and brand communication. So when people used to say, Tum kya karoge? Interestingly, hum multinationals ko, hum government ko, pranam natri, kautal vikas, goitna ko, solutions ke Interesting. So with 
clear and clear. And last one is ambiguity. Yes, there is a lot of ambiguity. The policies change, the things are changing, the way new you know, viruses are coming, I don't know what tomato flu and what not flus are coming. Yeah? So all these things are coming, monkey <coughs> flus, monkey pox, and what not poxes. Let's be agile. Have a small team, a wonderful team, a passionate team, and you're bound to succeed. So that's how I have worked in this organization. And so after working in industry for almost 10 good years, is when I decided to start off with my own outfit, which is in Capital Peaks Private Limited. And I'll just tell you a very interesting fact. You know, it, it didn't start like uh, you know, yesterday, and I had no plans as such. When I was working in the industry, like any other you know, people, when I was sitting on your side uh, of the table, always used to think, how does it make feel when you run, uh, you know, on a very fat package? And like those thoughts, which I even had like you people, I started earning a very fat package. But interestingly, I kept on contemplating because I used to talk to myself a lot that I'm just the same person. When I was earning very small, and today when I earn very huge, you see, to an organization, you have to go on a daily basis. Salary package, ek din milta hai. Lekin kaam mein maza, daily kaam hai. Which I stopped getting. And that's when the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, I would say, thought process came. So after working in industry for 10 years, I decided to you know, start up with this organization. And how the name Interactive Bees came in, because Interactive was the kind of business, what the kind of solutions that we work upon, both digital as well as the offline side. And bees are, you know it very well, always working with flowers and creating nectar, most important solutions, and that's how this was born. Started with just one man company, one person with another, you know. But that, you know, that the whole thing started working, growing. I was blogging, I was doing lots, and that one man of uh, army, or I would say the two people army, slowly and started me growing. So I would say a lot of times people ask me a spiritual question about reincarnation. I tell them, listen, I reincarnate on a daily basis. Every moment you have to undergo a metamorphosis. And there is so much beauty. Be in the moment. Enjoy every moment. Live every moment. Because I believe, and I believe then, I still believe I can. So there is nothing which is difficult. When a person like me can do it, I'm sure you guys can rock. So that's my small wow. Both Manita and Saurabh have covered fantastic territories and uh, given you the essence, essence of what is entrepreneurship all about. Uh, the biggest fear is within us, the biggest fear, the fear of failure. I'm standing here in front of you, but in the back of my mind, I know the failures I had in my life. None of you know about it. None of, none of you talk about it. None of you uh, would ever come to know about it. But any entrepreneurship that you start is surrounded by forces which can make you fail. Sometimes the failure is due to your own lack of competence, I would say, to overcome whether it's competition, whether it's uh, pricing, whether it's organization management, uh, what have you, or competition like uh, various things. But a smart guy or a smart person sometimes is able to foresee that problem coming and take 
steps to shield themselves from that or reinvent themselves. You have to reinvent yourself many times, like Marika said, every day, practically. Uh, uh, now, an enterprise is a living thing. An enterprise is not a, just a, an office or an address. It's a living thing. But if you have a small company, a few people are working. If it's a large company, then thousands of people are working in that enterprise. And the efforts of all of those thousands of people are either going to make or break that enterprise. So you have to keep them motivated and you have to keep them uh, goal bound. There has to be a goal that everybody has that Monica defined in terms of set up your own goals, think of your, think yourself. And so if some, uh, somebody said about the mirror, the story about the mirror was very good. The fact is that failure is a part of life as much as success is. And not to do something just because you're afraid of failure is the biggest failure. You know? I don't 100% agree with the Bhagavad Gita, which says, Karam Yogi, Karam Karta Chal, Tad Khal Ki Taram Mat De. Right? That's what I understand from the Gita. I agree with the first part, karam karta chal. Hal ana chahiye jo aapne socha tha hai. Because it comes to the, uh, I don't know how many of you are religious and how many of you are firm believers in uh, religion. But I have a house in which I have two atheists who don't believe. To them I don't explain karma by the Gita. To them I say, and this is a very uh, standard and old uh, this thing. The rational theory, cause and effect. Every cause has an effect, and every effect has a cause. What is happening to anything with you or with around us? There has been a cause for it. If we are today a backward country or a developing country, or our uh, population is uh, just barely on the minimum survival, this thing. The cause is there. We can blame it to the Mughals. We can blame it to the British. We can blame it to Jawaharlal Nehru and Congress. But the cause is there. The cause is, uh, today you can't undo that. But what you can do is, what is going to happen in the next 10 years? And, and fortunately for all of us, that the last 15 or 10 years of our, uh, 10 odd years of our uh, government or country, we have seen a very positive attitude towards taking the country onto a different path of self-reliance, of uh, pride in yourself. <coughs> Biggest important factor which has happened is that Indians all around the world are highly respected for them. Irrespective of the useless customs and the useless things we follow. We are a dirty nation. I'm sorry to say. We don't care about our environment, we care about our house, but we don't care about the environment around the house. We still throw stuff on the road and we still don't feel hurt about it. So all of us have to change. That change has to come from not the leaders, but from you youngsters. The youngsters are the future leaders. Our roles and doing or anything for this country are over, almost. And the next generation after us is in the middle. They didn't have the technology that you have. Today you order anything, you get it in 15 minutes in your house delivered. That kind of connectivity and that kind of technology never existed. You never heard of Zomato, never heard of Swiggy. Today uh, full house, uh, the dinner is prepared. Suddenly, last minute, don't eat me. Mere ko to hamburger kaan hai. Kya baat? So you are living in very different circumstances. Startups, uh, Monica said, yes, we are doing eighty thousand, I don't know, seventy thousand startups a year. We need eight million. Eight. I mean, the amount of problems in this country. There's so many of them. 
and they're all around us. Don't you feel bad when you drive to this place from Delhi? On the roadside you see, the rickshaw fellow is doing, driving the rickshaw the same way, what he did 100 years ago. The bullock cart is the same in the village, with the same old rubber tires and the same old bullocks, trying to uh, push uh, two bullocks, taking sugar cane or whatever to the factories. All of them need solutions. And all of them need practical solutions. So the opportunity, this is a land of opportunity. There is no country in the world, which I can think I have traveled to most of the countries in the world. I can't see any country which has so much opportunity as our country has. And it's in every field. It's not only in manufacturing. It's not only in services. It's not in hospitality alone. It's not in medical alone. It's not in consumer products alone. It's in everything that we do. Because we have to catch up. We have to catch up the period that we have missed. And when people get together and start a startup, it is with that passion they do. The person today thinking of making a watch, which is monitoring my heartbeat, my blood pressure, my uh, sugar level, everything, and reporting it to my doctor on a regular basis, he, he realized the problem. Today to go to a hospital and get it done, take, takes three, four hours of your time. So all over around us, we have the opportunity. Fortunately, uh, we have good technology available in the country. And we have access to technology from anywhere in the world, which never existed before. So do not think that uh, you have going to have a difficulty in starting something. Start it, give it a good try, give it your 100% passion, and let God do the rest. I do a, I, sorry, I, God plays a very important part. Good luck, okay? So don't ever think that uh, everything is here in my hands. There are certain things which are sometimes out of your hands. Sometimes they work good for you, sometimes they work bad. Thank you, sir. I think they, they are coming to more of those. And uh, I can't resist the interpretation Chan Pei. Unfortunately, all the Indian scriptures have been interpreted by the West yeah. in a wrong way. The interpretation by the West was totally wrong. Because the understanding is, do work, but the result is not in your hand. That's true. But You've got to get the results. Yeah. The only interpretation is do full your efforts, get the results. But if you don't get the results, because everything is not in your hand, then don't get disheartened. Carry on. That's the meaning of the second part. So, interpretation was simply to literally call the ahana, kikkan, palko madeho. Otherwise, if you are a marketing person, Got to look at the market targets. They are very important. You have to achieve them. But if you are not able to achieve them with any reason, policy has changed. The taste of the people has changed. Don't get disheartened. Change your strategy and work on. That's the true meaning of the Ekar. Gita's message of his talk. I'm 100% sold on that. And the vehicle, they, they are very meaningful. And lastly, one more comment. I'll, I'll give you a chance also. The ultimate objective of life is always happiness. Yes. Yeah. The Japanese may call it Ikigai. 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 That concept is very powerful. In whatever you do, passion is very important. Second is the your skill level is very important. Third is you should be able to contribute for the welfare of the people. When all the four things combine, and you are fully involved in the activity, 
इंडियन वर्ल्ड के लिए मन है यू आर फुली इन द मॉडर्न एक्टिविटी यू आर एंजॉइंग इट इट्स गुड फॉर द अदर्स एंड यू हैव गॉट द कैपेबिलिटी टू डू इट दैट्स वेयर यू शुड बी इन योर लाइफ एन एंटरप्राइज दैट इज दैट इज द एंटरप्राइजशिप इज एन आईडिया इट इट कैन गिव यू अ लॉट ऑफ जॉय टू सॉल्व इट द प्रॉब्लम इन अ वेरी क्रिएटिव वे विल एनीबॉडी यू लाइक मेक अ वन यस I'm happy we have followed a very unstructured way, but that's the way I wanted it to be. Because people talk from the heart. What we are learning today is not what they teach in the conventional entrepreneurship program or what they teach in Harvard, as they say. This is from the heart of the people. Please. We have to wait up <laughs> because this is the last comment yeah. and the most important one. Yeah. Listen to me. This is really very. Important. See, the big management guru, Peter Drucker. What did he say? You know, twenty-first century is the century of personal leadership. So I have no doubts on what will you do, how will you do. You all will do good. Okay, so let it off. Let it clap.
lot of time when they need me. They wish to interact with me. And I'm busy with my own phone. And I don't have time for them. Today I feel things have definitely eased my work. The applications on my mobile phone. And slowly, the mobile phone on the digital gadgets have gained mastery on me. Take back my sovereignty and use these gadgets, instruments, as just a helping hand. Because if I am empowered, if I am empowered, I will take the right decision. in this costume will succeed in whatever I do, whatever I create, because I have learned the art of taking care of my own self. Let me tell you, as IT professionals, even IT say, what I before did, which is put yourself before technology. Take care. I'm really grateful to all of you. You see the spectrum. All of us go from the heart and a totally different team, different themes. But the common element is there's a lot to learn from that. And okay. Thank you so much to all the panelists and the moderator. The floor is now open for uh, questions. Anybody here has any questions or wants to interact with the panelists? That was very good. Relaxing. One thing is, give me a visit. WhatsApp. No, I would like to ask Monica, ma'am, that since you are into marketing, how do you think the whole AI, ML or automation in the marketing field will lead the industry ahead because uh, we can now see, see that most of the things are getting uh, automated like even graphic designers more is getting automated <laughs> and has come with many options. Uh, I would see a near future wherein you would just have to put a description and your graphic will be generated. Similarly, the content part has been uh, automated by paper content. The, uh, they came up with an AI wherein you can generate your own content. So, uh, how do you think this will lead the whole marketing industry ahead? Very interesting one. Uh, you know, normally AI and ML, people are using for managing the data. And do you know, when we talk about these data sciences, data management, 
We all are part of this big data. Every moment, every second, you all are creating and generating this data. So the problem has been created. For the management, we've come up with yet another problem or a solution, so to say. So when you talk about AI and ML, needless to say, they work upon repetitive and understanding the human behavior. But interestingly, you know, when you talk about humans, you're working with a light machine. How this is going to behave, how this is going to react and response, respond to a particular situation is all unique. I'll give you a very practical example. Today at your home, the home help is not coming. You have four people in the family, your mom, yourself, your elder brother or your younger brother or a sister and your dad. Do you think everybody's response is going to be same? No. Who is the most irritated one? Mom. <laughs> She's going to jump and say, you know, these guys, they don't know, they have no manners, you do whatever and blah, 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 and they start saying. So it's like the same input, but different responses. Now what AI and ML are doing is, they are just trying to collate these responses and then come up with ideations. Well, definitely the repetitive things, they are of a great advantage. But when you talk about designs, I think human emotions, the thought process, you just can't do away with it. So technology is definitely an adjunct, but it, it's never a place. So we are still very, very important, and we are the ones who are driving this technology. So there's no ex you know, replacement, for sure. We are going to exist. We are always required. Does that answer your question? Chance it's the right matter. <laughs> I didn't get the question properly. Okay, I repeat. Uh, taking sustainability into consideration, other three E's, environment, ethics, and economy, uh, how can we track uh, the supply? How can we track the chain of product usage after the product has been used? How can we track that? After the product has been used? Yes, sir. Well, uh, Sustainability, the way it's being measured right now, it's basically uh, starting from the manufacturing process, the carbon footprint. What the manufacturing process is causing in terms of whether it's uh, effluents or it's the uh, gas elements or anything like that. After use of the product, uh, there is no parameter set as yet. The only thing that most people are talking about is recycling recycling or destruction, right? Now, destruction uh, is possible in some cases, not all, and it has its own problems. For instance, if you're going to burn garbage, or you're going to burn paper, or you're going to uh, destroy, burn, incinerate uh, plastics also, there's going to be effluent gases coming out of the incinerators which are actually quite harmful. Some of them are going to be very harmful. So today the uh, manufacturing companies and the uh, so-called uh, watchdog bodies of the government of various countries in the world, they are more inclined towards recycling and reuse of the, uh, of the packaging or the associated, what is consumed is there is no effect, right? So what is left over when you are buying a product when you are consuming something, that's not a problem. The problem is what is left over. Uh, there is a big issue about automobiles uh, disposal. There is a big issue about smartphones and computers disposal. And many countries have regulated the uh, disposal of these things because many of them have uh, very poisonous and uh, dangerous elements to them. Uh, the it's going to take a long time for human society to evolve. There is a lot of conflict between the standards of living of different countries. Okay? 
Now, the so called the so called Western civilized and developed countries, they do not want to uh, reduce their items of consumption in any manner or make them any way difficult uh, for them to produce or to deliver. And have, the regulations are coming. We, as are the least contributor, as you might be knowing, to the world's uh, economic uh, environmental damage. But we are the ones taking the lead in trying to tell everybody to agree to it. Everything, all that requires investment by those companies, those countries. And I don't think they are right now ready for it. And with this Ukraine war and this setback that has happened due to COVID, I think uh, this whole issue of sustainability and environment is going to get pushed back by at least a decade, if not more. Because uh, uh, economies are right now trying to figure out how to survive. A lot of them are in a lot of trouble. Uh, we are very fortunate that we have a huge market in our country and we're not so dependent upon uh, so many of the manufacturing or the external uh, inputs that we need in our country to survive. For other things, yes, we need. So I think uh, it'll be great if you could do a paper on it, on uh, environmental uh, uh, effects of products usage. It'll be a great research, and I think it'll be a, a wonderful subject to think about. Thank you. Uh, I like to add a bit more to this one. Uh, whatever has happened has happened. Of course, this is what we will do with the future. The concept lies in ethical liberation. That means you start with a product which is compatible with green. There's a lot of scope in that. Because many times, all the things which you talked about, the technologies which made a wrong choice. That means the products or the technology were not green. That means they were harmful to the environment, harmful to the people who are producing it, or they are using it, they are leaving an effect for all time to come. Due to their, uh, they can't be recycled. So the ultimate solution lies only in the choice of the right product, green products, technologies are there. Okay, then not a hanga pass, not but a pass free. Don't go for the rectification, go for the root cause. Choose the technology for the definition, which is better, which is green, so that you have a long term sustainability. Now, can you agree with that? Of course, 100%. Yeah. Any more questions? Last one. Okay, I think uh, we have enough of time. We have already overshot. And KT, who is organizing, uh, is giving the final signal. We okay, I agree with that. Thank you. contribution as a panelist on the entrepreneurship panel of Sapiens 2022. We were immensely motivated by the stories you shared that brought a specific point to life. The persuasiveness and thoughtfulness of your comments, your deep yet practical insights, and your years of experience made this one of our best panel discussions. It was an honor to have you here to talk about sustainability and how it is much more than just an abstract concept. It is the fundamental way to live an efficient life. We know your time is precious and we are immensely grateful you were able to carve out some time to join us. Thank you for helping us make this event a great success. I would now request Professor Kirti to hand over the souvenirs to our honorable panelists and moderator as a small gesture of gratitude. Kirti huh? is the organizer for the whole of the Sapiens. She's the chartered accountant. She bought the KPMG. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the Monday to Saturday's work. Thank you so much.